Hey guys, it's Katie from Romance Gardens. Thanks for tuning in today where we talk about all things amaryllis. Now, if you're not familiar with amaryllis, amaryllis are bulbs that you are forcing in the house. And what that basically means is this is a bulb that has already gone through any cooling or anything it needs, and it is ready for you to plant, bring it out of dormancy, and then allow it to bloom in your house. These particular bulbs are not something that you're gonna be planting outside year round because in most areas, these are not hardy. They are, however, as we'll talk about toward the end of the video, something you can get to bring around again. But let's talk about the basics, first of all. So here at Romance Gardens, we like to offer as many options as we can. So for our in-store customers, we usually have multiple sizes of bulbs. Uh, we have a kit size bulb. Now you'll see these at many different places and you can see this is a much smaller bulb. It still will bloom just fine. You should get a couple stalks, but depending on the size of the bulb, the bigger the bulb, the bigger your flowers. So you can see we do anything from a giant extra large, which is available in three colors, to what we call our large bulb, which is available in a few more colors and also in things like the double blooms. Now, again, here at Romans, go big or go home, we like to use the big bulb. And what I usually will do is take the bulb and for about 10 to 12 hours, I just want to soak the roots in a bit of water. Now, to do that, you wanna make sure that just the roots are in the water, so I could put a little bit more in here, but we wanna keep the bulb from going in water. Now, the reason I like to soak the roots a little bit first is it's just gonna help the amaryllis wanna come out of dormancy. Once you've done that, then what you wanna do is you wanna get a pot now with our large bulbs, I recommend a seven to eight inch pot, but you want at least two inches on the side for some growth and a little bit of stability. Now you can do clay pots, which will help you with kind of um, offsetting the weight of the big flowers. Uh, but again, you want to make sure that, uh, you know, you have a pot that's just a little bit bigger than your bulb, so it gets some nice soil room for it. Now, what you wanna do is I've already put soil in the pot and I'm kind of gonna make myself a teeny little well because um, I've soaked these and I'm gonna just nestle them right into the pot. Now I'm gonna remove the label for a minute so we can work. I'm gonna give it just a little bit of a, a snuggle in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to backfill it with more soil. Now with amaryllis bulbs, you want to keep what's called the neck and the shoulder out of the soil. So again, this neck part and just the curve of her shoulder should stay out of the soil. So I'm going to just firmly press all of the soil down right around the edges and just make sure that she's got a nice little snug home here and just I'm allowing this top to go and be uh, free. I always like to try and make them straight because they definitely will start to lean at different times so starting straight is always a good option. Then I'm going to take this to the sink and I'm going to slowly water this until I've completely moistened all the soil. At that point in time, I will put this in the warmest, brightest location that I have, and I'm just going to let it start coming out of dormancy. Now, you usually do not have to water them much between the initial water until you start seeing some growth come up. Um, because the key to doing amaryllis correctly is not having them sit soggy, soggy wet. You just want the root to be enveloped in some moisture. Now, with the extra large bulbs, you can see I will go as big as eight to 10 inches um, because I like to have a good amount of room. So a lot of times here in the store, we will even plant them in these large 10 inch pots. Same thing, neck and shoulders above the ball, bulb to get them a nice and good home so that they can root it. Once your amaryllis start growing, uh, you know things are good. Then you're gonna water probably once a week to once every two weeks, just to make it uh, sure, again, to make sure that it's just somewhat moistened. Uh, once it starts to grow, some amaryllis will show, uh, send spikes up first, other amaryllis will send up leaves first. Don't worry, as long as you're seeing growth, that's a good sign. Now, the bigger the bulb, the longer it can take to sometimes come out of dormancy. So for the extra large bulbs, we recommend starting right now, um, anytime between the middle of October and the end of October, because it can be up to 10 weeks before it comes out of dormancy. Once an emerald starts to grow, then it's all dependent on light and warmth. Um, once it's warm, it'll just start keeping going and everything like that. It's easier to slow the bulb down to hold it for like Christmas blooms than it is to try and speed it up. So that's why we recommend starting a little on the earlier side. And if it starts to get too far along for like when your party is going to be or something, you can just slightly cool it to keep it from going and opening as fast. But again, you're gonna wanna make sure that you've got a good couple inches, the neck and the shoulders are there, a good water, and then you should be all set to go. 
One last thing about amaryllis that I think is really cool is a lot of the large and extra large ones will send up a couple spikes, but then will usually continue to spike sometimes two to sometimes three more times in January through about March or April. Just keep allowing those stalks to come up, keep allowing the leaves to grow, and keep it on a basic watering, ba uh, watering schedule. Uh, when they have grown and there's no more blooms, allow the plant to stay in a sunny location. You can even put it outside for the summer if you've got nice weather. Uh, but again, keep watering it right through the end of August. Once the end of August comes along, you're gonna wanna cut everything off of the bulb. And then what I usually do is I let it go completely dry in the pot and I put it away in a cupboard somewhere where it's cool but not freezing or cold and where it will not be any light or moisture. And then I let it sit for that six to eight week period of time, which will bring me back to about October. Then I bring it out into the light, I do one really good soak and I'm really starting the process over again. Um, so again, if you have any questions about that, feel free to send us an email or give us a call at your convenience and we can run through more of those questions for you. So once you have all your amaryllis planted, I recommend doing multiples in multiple color because they can be placed all around the house, uh, gorgeous in bathrooms, uh, great centerpieces, things like that. Um, and I think once you embark on your amaryllis journey, you're gonna really love it. Now stay tuned because next week we'll probably be talking to you about paper whites and that's another bulb that's great for forcing inside. Uh, one that you either probably love or hate depending on how you feel about the fragrance, but we'll talk about that next week. Thanks for tuning in.